Good morning, fellow billionaires. This is Silver 5150 with your weekend wrap-up for Saturday, August 7th, 2021. Just hanging out here in the Stacker's Chill-Out Lounge with my Amy Brown 5-Ounce Proof Sisters round from her limited collection in a nice little holder that a good friend of mine makes for coins like these and other items of bullion import. I'm going to show you guys something real quick. Remember after 2010 and 11, the uh, housing crisis we had? Remember when this was all the rage? Yeah, right? Well, how about this? Yeah. Instead of predatory lending we had some 10 years ago, how about predatory trading today? I'm not just talking about the regular markets or anything. Of course, you know I'm a gold and silver guy, mostly silver. Silver 5150 here, guys, and I approve this message. There's nothing but a bunch of predatory, predatory trading going on right now causing the problems we're having with silver prices in the market. Now, look, if you guys are just coming into the game, say, in the last year or so, I'm very happy for you because the shopping opportunities are still very good. But there's a lot of us who have been in the game for a while that are looking to catch that revaluation, to catch the upward movement in silver, the true price discovery we're always talking about, because there are things we're ready to do in the economy now. Guys, the economy is sick, all right? The economy is sick. It is broken. It is unbalanced, and it needs to be fixed. Now, here's one of my favorite proverbs right here. Unequal weights and unequal measures are both alike an abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 20, 10. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 10. Okay, so look here. Um, this is true. You know, the reason why we had a lot of problems in the housing market back when we did is because there was more money being lent than people that could afford to borrow it and probably more houses than people needed to buy. So, but that's not my point. What I like to refer to when I think of unequal weights and unequal measures, the U.S. dollar and the U.S. dollar. Both are dollars, but are they equal weights and measures as far as purchasing power? Even though this one's a dollar, the Silver Eagle, American Silver Eagle, and this was a dollar, the United States Federal Reserve note valued at one dollar. Um, you know, when these both came out, they started with the same amount of purchasing power way back in 1914 or something like that. And as time went on, the Silver Eagle began to outperform the paper note to the point to where now it would take probably 35 of these to get one of these. And as a result, you get 35 times more purchasing power out of the Eagle than you do the paper dollar, even though they both start out the same. But what made them change? Well, there was unfair weights and measures practices as far as what these things could purchase, the items they could purchase. And that came from an expanding banking sector. Okay. But 5150, you say? What would cause this? What would cause unfair prices in silver along with un fair or un um even banking measures uh in the world and that is going to be silver and gold traders in this particular case gold traders found guilty in spoofing a while back and um, of course they're going to be uh uh probably uh sent to the gallows for that but the thing is the spoofing deal guys it causes a lot of unfair um, market value in silver and in gold and stuff. And these guys, these are traders that either work for commercial banks. These could be people that, you know, operated the Comex, or it could be even political um, pressure um, in the um, pricing of silver, you know, for whatever, whatever reason, strategic, what have you, that will keep um, a lot of unwanted influence on the price of silver. You know, silver is supposed to be able to be traded freely in the capital markets, just like any other asset. That's why you see such a huge spread between Bitcoin and silver, which I will repeat, both started out um, in 2011, silver at $35 an ounce and Bitcoin at $1 a coin, even though there's a lot more silver ounces than there are Bitcoins. The 35,000 times spread or 40,000 times spread does, is not justified in silver being less than it was back then and Bitcoin 40,000 times more than it was uh, then also. And by the way, what does it look like when silver gets spoofed in the market open in the American session? Well, kind of like this. 
Um, this is Spot Silver this morning, um, yesterday morning, on the uh, New York market. And you can see that probably about 9 o'clock New York time, uh, the market just, I mean, went bluey all the way down. Probably, I'm going to say, what, 90 cents at its lowest point? Went down 90 cents. And it was on really no news. I think they had some job reports come out, um, whatnot. The market was very temp tepid about it. Talking about stocks were very tepid about it. But, of course, metals got killed. All right? And But I got to tell you, though, this is only the final leg for the week where this was going on. Because check this out. If you look on the 60-day silver chart, you can see that all through the last couple of months that there has been an active effort to push down the price of silver. We were up around 28, you know, back at the uh, beginning of June. And over time, we've been monkey hammered down to a price level that's more digestible to the commercial banks that are mega, mega short um, silver and they need to get out of those positions. They need to unwind those positions so they don't have to come up with the silver come the September delivery session. And so they're going to do whatever they have to do to get out of those positions. And if they have to spoof, meaning that they put in these huge sell orders, they have the traders put in these huge sell orders and actually pull the order before they actually sell any paper silver, which they don't sell any real silver anyway. Um, and that's how it's done. And you can see if you check really close. There's a pattern about the times they do it, when they do it, end of the week, whatever it takes to keep the sentiment down in silver, the sentiment down in silver, and to keep the price going lower so people will be deterred from buying it, which I think is a huge mistake now because people are aware of the hidden value in silver and to also create a cheaper price for them to get out of their contracts, meaning they have to buy new contracts for a lower price. And that's how they do it. So again, predatory trading. This is what these guys are doing. It is predatory trading in that they are basically going out and cannibalizing the silver spot market pricing mechanism to gain money off of shorting silver or going long silver whenever it suits them. The problem is, is that silver was never intended to be a trader's plaything. It was never intended to be a commercial bank's plaything. It was never intended to be some financial instrument for people to speculate on and create a lot of havoc in which should be God's money. God is watching. He sees what's happening. When he's ready, there's going to be a price to pay for diminishing his money and turning it into an ugly thing. That's just, I don't know the mind of the Lord, but I got, I got a feeling that's coming. And what is that going to look like when, when it happens? Well, just keep your eye on the banking system. I think, um, who was it? Wells Fargo a couple of weeks ago said that they were going to um, either cut credit, limit credit, or force people to um, resolve their credit and not issue it anymore in certain types of lending. So here we are again. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 10. Unequal weights and unequal measures are both alike an abomination to the Lord. So keep it up, guys. Keep it up. At some point, we're going to get to a um, area where copper is about to run in the silver on the way down as copper is on the way up. Now, granted, it'll be the price of copper per pound versus the price per ounce of silver. So it wouldn't be an actual ounce per ounce disparity. But the thing is, is that even if the numbers start to jive, like say WTI crude and Brent crude, you could see how that would make the news. So all I'm going to say is this. Even if you think what you're doing is just a job or it's harmless or you're somehow helping the economy by just beating the tar out of silver and trading paper contracts and trading all these derivatives that you think um, either make you cool or helps the system or, you know, it's okay to make money that way. You are doing it against a money that was made by um, a pretty important person and he has meant it to be money. Countries have minted it to be money, and it does not need 850 some odd paper, paper ounces to each metal ounce to each silver ounce to make it um, a viable monetary asset. It is money in and of itself. It does not need any derivatives complex behind it. So all I'm asking is, can we stop doing this and just get along like the sisters here? Can we all just get along? Okay, guys, I'm just saying. Let silver be what it was meant to be. Let it be money. Let it be sound. Let it be its own financial asset. 
without all the derivatives behind it. I'm Silver5150 telling you guys out there stacking physical silver that your stack is not whack. Don't let anybody tell you any different. And that this 20 ounces to your name keeps you 99% ahead of the game. If you like this kind of content, please uh, share, subscribe, comment. Um, check us out on Instagram. And we will catch you next week with another show. Have a great weekend, guys. Thank you.